Hi everyone, it's me. This week I wanted to talk a bit more about British slang and word choice. I did a video a while back about speak like a Brit where I basically asked, is it res like respectable for a Canadian living here in the UK to use British slang and words and that sort of thing? Um, people overwhelmingly said they didn't care. <laughs> and as long as you're polite and respect, respect I'm really struggling with that word, respectful, then it didn't matter. Um, so for this video, I wanted to look specifically at some of my favorite British slang and British word choices that you're likely to hear if you ever come visit or ever move here like I did. So without further ado, let's go. Now one of the most common and obvious words you'll hear in the UK is mate. So mate can be used with friends or with strangers. I've heard it both ways. Um, it just really depends, I guess, how outgoing you are and whether you feel comfortable saying it to a complete stranger. The Canadian equivalent to mate, I would probably say would be something like dude or bud. Um, so a Canadian might say, hey there bud. That sounded really lame. <laughs> you will definitely hear mate a lot. I think probably the next most common word you will hear in the UK is cheers. What a nice word. So cheers naturally you think of like clinking pint glasses, you know, cheers. Um, a lot of people also say cheers as in thank you. So you're at a bar, you get your pints, you say cheers mate to the bartender and off you go. Um, cheers, I don't know, it's just a fun way of saying thank you. In Canada, I don't think we have an equivalent to, to cheers as a thank you. So, I mean, in Canada, you'd say thank you, thanks. Um, God, that's, that's it, right? Now, I work at a college down in the southeast, and one of the most common things I hear from students is, isn't it bruv? Isn't it bruv? While it is fun to say, it is so annoying. Isn't it bruv, literally broken down, isn't it, as in isn't it, and then bruv, obviously, bro, brother, what have you, isn't it bruv. You will hear students saying it all the time. I mean, I've heard adults say it, unfortunately. I don't know if that's something that is said um, up north. Definitely I hear it down here in the southeast. Isn't it bruv. I don't really think Canadians have an equivalent to isn't it bruv. And if we do, I'm not hip enough to know it. Hip, oh my god. Not hip enough, oh my god. Another very common phrase you'll hear in the UK is, you alright? Some people will say, you alright mate. Some people say, you alright. Some people just say, alright. I don't say it. I don't say any of the combinations because I think it sounds really dumb when I say it. But it's basically the Canadian equivalent would be, you know, how are you? How are you doing? Everything okay? That sort of thing. It's just sort of a, a generalized question that you ask somebody, um, you hear it constantly. One of my personal favorites that I hear a lot is the term gutted. So gutted is basically like really disappointed. So you know, I was running to my bus stop and I missed my bus. I was so gutted, which happens more than I'd like to admit. Like tonight, my bus just never showed up. I was very gutted. Another personal favorite that I hear lots is saying bless or oh bless him. For people who have never heard it, it kind of sounds like a religious thing, you know, like oh bless, bless you, but it, it really isn't. You would say bless or oh bless him in conversation, maybe about somebody did something really embarrassing and you're like oh bless him or Somebody did something really sweet. They brought biscuits into the office. Oh, bless him. There's so many different ways to say it and I hear it constantly. So there's so many different variant situations. Is that a word? I'm not sure. Or maybe um, so-and-so is supposed to come to the party tonight, but he's really ill and you're like, oh, bless. I think it's cute. I like it. 
A phrase that I really like and I hear it a lot down here in the southeast of England is lost the plot or losing the plot. So basically you can imagine if you've lost the plot of something, like you have no idea what's going on, you're confused, you're just, you might even be angry, like you've, you've lost the plot. So maybe you're at work and you're told to do some sort of project and you're chatting with a coworker and you're like, you know, I've lost the plot, no idea what I'm doing. Or maybe you get really mad at somebody. I've also heard it in like an anger type situation. So again, you're at work, maybe you're gossiping about somebody because who doesn't love a good gossip? So maybe you say something like, oh, you know, John just kept waffling on and I just lost the plot with him. Waffling is another good word. When somebody won't shut up, they just keep talking, kind of like me. So yeah, waffling and lost the plot are two favorites. Another favorite of mine would have to be, does my head in? So again, maybe John's waffling on and you're just like, oh, John does my head in. So somebody or something is really annoying and you're just like, I can't just, I can't bother. I just cannot be bothered to deal with it. Or maybe, you know, I'm supposed to take the train in, but they're always late and it just does my head in. I'm sure all the British people watching are cringing at me saying these phrases, but feel free to leave your own um, examples below of how you like to use these particular words and phrases. So those are some of my favorite phrases and words that I hear a lot here in the UK, specifically in the Southeast. I don't know how popular they are up North. All the Northerners are probably like, mm, these Southerners don't know anything. Feel free to use these words in a sentence wherever you live and see if anybody knows what you're saying. So we've got mate, cheers, in it bruv, you all right, does my head in, gutted, lost the plot, and bless. Good luck. But as always, thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye. Oh, and I was just about to pack up and I remembered one of my favorite words, I should have just saved this for the next one, but numpty. I love calling people numpties. I don't really know where that came from, so if British people know the origin, by all means, go ahead. But I love if someone's being annoying or done something dumb or I want to start a fight, just call someone an umpty.